let's go talk to the team. See if we can look at their lockers and get them all set up. Talk to Caden first. Sup. Commander, do you have a minute? For what? What's on your mind, Lieutenant? Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction. But yep. we can't get back up from the council? No. Nope. Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. I mean, I agree with them. The council doesn't want to believe anything's wrong. I'd call it human nature, but... I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the council should see this coming. And it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, well. You're a romantic. Oh, my hair's Sorry, like freaking out. Malenko. Secure man's future in space. I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of the woman he loves or, you know. Well, that's sense. adorable. Uh, maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Brain Biotic camp. acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in Bot. What did Tell they train me you for? It. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Brain camp? We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation <laughs> of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. I heard all about that. How companies would arrange accidents to expose people to element zero. Oh my gosh. There was never any proof of that. It's not what happened in my case anyway. My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics. A little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. Oh wow. It only gets to be around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first gen subjects. Until then they'd relied on accidentals. Bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school. Next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? The yeah, freaking lighting on my hair is freaking out. <laughs> this facility we have right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Sterile research? What? There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. Okay. We didn't have much to do though. It was a research platform, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. Oh. What the? I. Is that a, like a like a like a? You're hitting on him. I don't want to do that. And you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah, we'd sit around and bowl every night after dinner, play cards. That's nice. Network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little Rana. Around her. She little crush. Was Turkey. Her family was very rich, but she was smart and charming as hell. Beautiful. But Got a little crush. Hell. Like you. I guess. Oh, oh. Oh god, sounds rough. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. Don't, don't, no, don't compare me. Do not do it. You know of any We're moving on. Exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down after. What is going on with the back of my hair? That parting looks so weird. a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but in retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. All right. Jump Zero is a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vision. <laughs> yeah. 
That's anywhere, really. This is supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. I pretty much gave up waiting for the good part. Oh, j bad habit. I didn't mean to be rude. I will work on it for my next review. Sorry, I wasted your time, ma'am. Won't happen again. Kaden, I didn't mean that. I just want to be friends. <laughs> I should have gone with the middle option. My B. Um, Liara should be in here, right? Commander, are you coming to check up on me? I was worried. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. We're gonna be super nice to the Yara for reasons. I me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like them. That's just Ashley. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Tell me about yourself, Liara. Me? I am afraid I am not very interesting, Commander. I spend most of my time on remote digs, unearthing mundane items buried in long-forgotten Prothean ruins. Sounds dangerous. And lonely. Sometimes I would run afoul of indigenous life forms or stumble across a small band of mercenaries or privateers. But I was always careful. Until the Geth followed me to Artemis Tau. I never found myself in any situation my biotics could not handle. As for the solitude, well, that is one aspect that most appealed to me. Sometimes I just need to get away from other people. You don't like other people? I suppose it comes from being a matriarch's daughter. People expected me to follow in Vanessa's footsteps. They wanted me to become a leader of our people. Matriarchs guide their followers into the future. They seek the truth of what is yet to come. Maybe that's why I became so interested in the secrets of the past. It sounds so foolish when I say it out loud. It sounds like I became an archaeologist simply to spite Benezia. Well, do you like it? You must enjoy something about it. I love my work. Seeking out history's lost secrets has a special appeal for me. You were actually touched by working Prothean technology. That is why I find you so fascinating, Commander. I'm... I'm fascinating? Sounds like you want to dissect me in a lab somewhere. What? No! I did not mean to insinuate... Uh, I never meant to offend you, <laughs> She's so I cute! I only that you would be an interesting specimen for an in-depth study. Uh, no, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Liara. I was only joking. Joking? Oh, by the goddess, how could I be so dense? <laughs> Look at her fumbling. I am a complete and utter fool. Now you know why I prefer to spend my time in the field with data disks and computers. I always seem to say something embarrassing around other people. I find it Please, endearing. just pretend this conversation never happened. All right. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long to run. To kill every species? At least I hope so. Oh, she sounds troubled. hurts you, doesn't it? None of this makes any sense to me. I have not spoken to Venezia in many years, but I know her. And this was not like her. Something changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council. And we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. Uh-huh. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. What kind? Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. Mating my rituals? My species is monogendered, male and female, have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Wow. They're so interesting. I understand. Your species can mate with anyone? 
Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identity. That's so cool. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others Makes can sense. be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Do you know who Matriarch Venezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Oh. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. Venezia never told you her partner's name? Union with our own kind is no longer common. Oh. Not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters oh, inherit that sucks. racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained. Or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Maybe she wanted to meet you but couldn't. Something could have happened to her. Maybe she passed away. You might be right. I hope you are. But I have no way to know for sure. That sucks. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. You Asari live for a thousand years. A thousand years? What happens when your partner dies? Few sapient species live as long as my kind. We have learned to take a philosophical approach to our unions. We do not focus on the inevitable loss of our partners. Instead, we enjoy the time we spend Aww, with them. Aww, that's a nice way to look at gone, it. A part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. That's kind of sweet. Um, I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species. Did to I? My people believe we are all part of a single. Go Although we seek to understand other species. Okay, yeah, we we already did that. Sorry, Goodbye, sorry, sorry. Shepherd. Sorry, very interesting. I like the concept of being able to meld whatever with other species. To produce children. Anything to say, Garrus? How are you? Tell me about you and C-Sec. Why did you want to be a C-Sec officer in the first place? Hmm. It's a good question. You don't know? For several reasons, I guess. Like, like what? what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice. Wanted to help people. Okay. I guess my father had something to do with it too. Uh, ah, there we go. One of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture. Is he still a CSA? Best. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. He's not impressed that you're going after Saren? With a specter? A man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all. He, ah. he thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. What? No, you're far from that. You were asked to be a specter. That's well, crazy. I was targeted as a possible specter candidate. Me and about a thousand other uh, okay. recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the specters. He hates the idea of someone having unlimited power with no accountability. We don't have unlimited like power. No offense. Spoken like a true CSEC officer. <laughs> yeah, it's a speech I've heard one too many times. But Saren's not going to play by our rules. No. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. Exactly. Good learner, Garrus. We'll beat him at his own game. It's the only way to stop someone like him. I'm right behind you, Commander. Nice. Commander? How are we doing? What's your opinion of the last mission? Not sure I buy Dr. Tassoni's story uh. about her and her mom not talking. 
their family, right? Ashley, not everyone has good family relations. I think she's being straight with us. Or at least I don't think she lies very often. Yeah, she's probably really bad at it. Yeah, she probably hey, is. Want me to ask her about her sex life? Might be illuminating. Is that the best way to spend your time? <laughs> I read you, Commander. I'll behave. Like, what the heck? Those ruins got destroyed. I mean, they lasted That's totally years. inappropriate. That's impressive. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I, I was hoping to get a minute of your time off the record. Is this duty related, Chief? No, ma'am. Well, maybe. Is it about the aliens? I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy. But, She's so <laughs> alienist. The aliens, Vicarian and Rex. They're right there. They can hear you. Should they have full access to the ship? You don't trust their motives because they're not human. This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance. Now. And? I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Tur Engines, didn't Turians sensors, help? Weapons. That's enough, Chief. You always second guess your superiors? Ma'am, no ma'am. I'm sorry, I was out of line. I'll get back to my duties, Commander. Can't have that. So, we've got Saren on the run. Yeah. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's right. <laughs> well, I mean, Two yeah. Four. I could tell as soon as I met him. You met Saren? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? What? I would have if I thought it was important. I'll decide what's important. Now tell me how you know Saren. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs a while ago. bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he okay. was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It was like that Krogan we saw. And he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What was he doing? What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. Interesting. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Oh, dang. I didn't even wait to get paid. Dang, really? That bad of a feeling? What kind of cargo was the freighter carrying? What was Saren after? I don't know. All I saw on that ship was food and medical supplies. Hmm. There were some basic weapons, but nothing big. If there was anything of value on that ship, I didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it sooner. Okay. Which ship was it? There was a Volus trading vessel. Volus? Big one. Lots of guards. But they were no match for us. Okay. Was that That's it? the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead. Oh my gosh. Week. Every damn one. That's messed up. So long, Rex. Rex really dodged a bullet there. <laughs> wonder if Tally has anything else to talk about. I don't like that you can only talk to your human crewmates about the last mission. Oh, hello, Shepard. What the heck? What's wrong? Are you okay? I don't know. Your ship is amazing, and your crew's been really great Aww. to me, especially your chief engineer. But I just sort of feel out of Are you homesick? Somewhere. The Normandy runs so smooth, it feels like we're not even moving. And the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? <laughs> Too quiet to sleep? Silence wakes you up? Back on the flotilla, the last thing you want to hear is silence. It means an engine's died or an air filter shut down. Oh no. I guess you don't have to worry about that here. But old habits die hard. 
But it's more than just a silence. This ship feels so empty. It's like half the crew is missing. Back home, I couldn't wait to go on my pilgrimage. I couldn't wait to get away from the crowds. Now that I'm out here, I kind of miss them. Aw, she's homesick. Sounds like the pilgrimage isn't just about finding resources for the fleet. Maybe it's about teaching you to appreciate your people and culture. You're probably right. We Quarians spend our whole lives traveling. But really, we never leave home. The pilgrimage has given me a whole new perspective on our culture. Well, it's good, then. No, there's always a few who go on their pilgrimages and never return. I always assumed something bad happened to them. But maybe they just wanted a different life. You do plan to return to the migrant fleet, right? I could never abandon my people, Shepard. I will go back eventually. But we have to stop Saren first. Otherwise, I might not have a home to go back to. Um, okay. I should go. Poor Tally. See I hope later. she gets used to it. I guess we're going back to the map. I say we continue exploring. This place until we look at all the planets. See if there's more we can land on, hopefully. Message coming in. Oh gosh. Patching it through. Well, look at there. Commander Shepard, my name is Nasana Dantius. I have a job for you. I can't say anymore in an unsecured communication. Okay. If you're interested in hearing my offer, Meet me on the Citadel, so we can talk in person. Wasn't she in the, the bar? The fancy the bar? Yeah, the Diplomat Lounge. Okay. The geological, geological properties of Salamis have been scanned from orbit, but little else is known about it. Due to its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and proximi proximity to the energetic star um, Athens, the equilateral daytime temperatures have been known to turn the surface molten? Ooh. The crust is composed of iron with deposits of platinum group metals. The surface turns the molten? Alright, we can survey this one. Like the Hanar homeworld, Proteus has more than 90% ocean, oceanic cover. Wow. 90%? The incredible heat thrown off from a Athens raises global humidity to 100%, creates constant cloud cover, and powers colossal typhoons that rage across the surface year-round? That does not sound like a fun time. Hot, humid, and storm-wrecked Proteus rare combination of oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere, and carbon-based biosphere, nevertheless recommended for colonization. <laughs> A pilot program is studying the possibility of colonies below the ocean surface, safe from the worst effects of the weather. That sounds scary. I'm not a fan of deep water. But if they could do it... There's a colony there, though. 12k. Let's survey it. Gas deposit survey. Cool. Anything in the asteroid belt? Not this time. Traces of sodium in the atmosphere give Nausicaa its overall dark gray color, but it's otherwise a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. An abundance of water vapor in the upper atmosphere account for its white clouds. Interesting. You can survey this one too. Cirs is a moderately sized hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sulfur and chlorine. These give it a striking yellow green tint. As the development of the Proteus colony continues, Cirs will likely be developed for helium 3 mining. Okay. Gas deposit surveyed. Got helium 3. Descent Ferris has seen only a cursory examination by an unmanned probe. It has a traced atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. 
Its surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of carbon. Deeper craters have been partially filled by ice, suggesting there may be a significant amount of water locked up beneath its frozen surface. A large ice bright crater in the southern hemisphere makes the planet visible from the inner system, leading to the planet's name. Ooh. Turian insignia recovered. Scans of the planet Pharos revealed an abandoned base on its moon. The recon team found nothing of interest, but much of the debris was marked with the Magma Colony Insignia. Interesting. Macedon. What secrets do you hold? We can land on this one. Sargela has a very dense atmosphere of amnonemia, am, I can't say it, I'm sorry, and oxygen. Its temperature surface is mainly composed of alumina with deposits of sulfur. Comboros in the system have recently logged a number of unregistered vessels operating nearby. Huh. Sargela has an extensive silicon-based oxygen breathing e ecology. Heavily populated areas are covered with the fine silica, silicon dioxide dust, the respiratory byproduct of the world's higher anim animal forms. High speed surface winds, often laden with abrasive silica dust, present a hazard. In areas where the wind deposits a great deal of silica, footing can be treacherous. EVAs are discouraged. Oh, we're landing. Let's go. We're bringing Liara. No, not Rex. Sorry, Rex. You're getting kicked out. I mostly want to upgrade Liara with her points and weapons and whatever. Whatever she uses. And we got four points. I want to get to medium armor. Oh, right. She has the first aid. She has electronics. Interesting. But she doesn't have decryption. We'll make her have all the first aid. That's what we're... Tally also has first aid. I wonder if I have shield boost though. Alright, let's look at equipment. We did get new um, stuff. Scimitar 3? I'll take that. Dang, my stinker's still better than those. I got toxic damage. Wait, what weapons do Liara use? She doesn't have any specialization in weapons. She's all biotic. Just give her whatever then.
moisturized joints. Can I? I I'm trying. I just wanted to go to my map. The music went away. I hate it when it does that. There's enemies! It did say that place was a stronghold. one of those rare moments where I got pushed onto my back. <laughs> well, there's also a mineral deposit over there. What's over here? Sorry, capsule. What do we get? Matriarch's writings were covered. It's not clear who lived here, but it appears to have been abandoned for some time. The container in the tent held, among other things, one of the pa uh, one of the matriarch Dalinga's writing. Okay, <laughs> Dalinga. Matriarch Dalinga. Okay, I can equip medium armor now. and newtons um oh she can't wear medium armor that sucks oh well Wait, do I have medium armor I can wear now? No. Our element surveyed. Cool. Guess we go to the stronghold now, huh?
There's snippers. You think I'm gonna get out of my car? Especially when there's hazards? Did we get all the baddies? I think we did. So there's an exclamation mark here. There's a lot of enemies. Why is everyone just running? Lift the Krogan. I'll throw that person. Now the Krogan's behind us. Is he dead? Who the frick are you? A pirate? Bruh, can we... Jeez. Tolly, what are you doing? What does that do? Creates a vortex that draws objects towards it. Target eliminated. It must be above. No, no, I wanted to throw. Gotta throw master. Who the heck is that? Oh jeez. I'm gonna die. Holy crap. I think we got them all. Frickin' pirates. You discovered ev evidence that the Sari leaving these slaves in the sauna Dantius? Didn't she just contact us? An important ambassador on the Citadel are sisters? Wait, the uh, Sari? And Nasana. Was Nasana a Asari? I thought she was human. Maybe I'm wrong. You return, return to the Pisidium and confront Nasania with this evidence. Or with this. Download evidence. What the hell? <laughs> no wonder she contacted us. She probably wanted to do something about it. Maybe she's, um, was in cahoots with her and wanted us to not be in that system. Too late now, she's dead. <laughs> Was that all the goodies? I'm assuming so. Oh, well, there's one more over here. Upgrade kit. 
Well, that's interesting. I think we're done here, right? Yeah, let's go back to Normandy. Pata Vig is the second of the Macedon system's giant terrestrial planets and by far the most interesting. Most of the surface is covered by a vast sea of liquid and amnomia, in which a unique aquatic amnomia based biosphere has developed. While the frozen continents are largely bereft of life, a rich bounty of complex organisms, many larger than a human, flores in the chilly, toxic seas. Mm. While dreadfully inhospitable, hospitable to humans. Patovic is suitable for colonization by the Volus. Negotiations between the Systems Alliance and the Volus pa patrons with the Turian hierarchy have made good progress. Okay. I'm scared of what's in the ocean. Porolon is an enormous terrestrial planet half again the size of Earth. Despite its thick atmosphere, the weak output of the red dwarf Macedon leaves its surface biting cold. Ooh. The crust is mainly composed of silica, but significant deposits of iron and other industrial metals are present. These loads may prove rich enough to be profitable of mine despite the heavy gravity. Matriarch's writings were covered. You were scanning the planet Porolon when a strange signal came from orbit. Navigator Presley determined the signal was an ancient beacon. Your salvage team brought the beacon aboard and found one of the matriarch's Dillingia. Dylan Naga's writings in its storage <laughs> compartment. Dylan Naga. Wow. Okay. Anything in the asteroid belt? Aha. Metallic. Survey it. Light metal surveyed. Nice. Anything else? Fragalus is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with an abundance of airborne hydrocarbons. Gas deposit survey. Nice. I think we're done in this system. I mean, we could go back. Wait, what was that system? I kind of want to, like, um, look at these other systems before going on with the main mission. I swear we had, um, a side quest or something. That's Kohaku, this one. The Hades Gamma Cluster. Let's go there. Just right there. Perfect. Farinata. I know it said it's in the other one, but let's go here first. Message coming in. Oh. Patching it through. Commander, we've got a situation that requires your expertise. A group of fanatical biotics have kidnapped the That's not what it said, what? Committee on Transhuman Studies. What? They're afraid of sustained damage and is dead in space. Get in there and take them down. What kind of resistance should I expect? The biotics were seen loading equipment into the freighter. Expect traps and combat drones. Nothing you can't handle. What are the biotics asking for? They're L2 biotics, and most of them are suffering major side effects from the implants. Oh no, we just learned about that. A request for reparations to all L2 what? Biotics. Apparently they'd like the chairman to reconsider. What's the priority on saving the chairman? Saving him would be my preference, but we must make it clear that these tactics don't work, Commander. Your top priority is to neutralize the biotics. Understood, Admiral. I'll see what I can do. I appreciate you've taken the time, Commander. 
I'm sending you the last known coordinates of the freighter. Good luck. Fifth fleet out. Okay. Tlenshagon is a hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of chlorine and nitrogen in, the, in its atmosphere. It has an unusually small number of moons for a gas giant. A mere seven. That's small? <laughs> this is no doubt due to the star of Farinata capturing the majority of the mass during the nebular collapse that created the system. Interesting. Anything in here? Rocky asteroid. Let's survey it. Light metal surveyed. I'm assuming this was the freighter. Gentalma is a small, broiling terrestrial world. Its thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane is being steadily blown off by the powerful solar wind from the star Farinata. The surface is scorching hot and mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of copper. Its density is low enough to leave the world tidally locked to Farinata. The Alliance Defense Data Network notes that several ships have been spotted cruising near Juntoama with transponders turned off. While an Alliance patrol attempted to pursue of one, the unidentified vessel rabbited to FTL, its trail was lost when it obscured its light trace and the confusion of signals along the Honestly, it's star shipping lane. Okay. Prothean data disk recovered. Scans of Juntama re revealed a derelict freighter in mid-stage orbital, orbital decay. Your savage team boarded the vessel and determined it had been attacked by raiders. There was little of value still on board, but the team did find a Prothean data disk. Cool. With a rare combination of features, Nepunia, Nep, Nepnu is of particular interest to the scientific community. Nepnu is a small terrestrial planet with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and krypton. Krypton! As with all the worlds of Farinata, its surface is scorching hot. The crust mainly consists of silicates light laced with iron. Rare element surveyed. Cool. <laughs> Do we want to do this? I haven't saved in a while. Let me save real quick. 